You're probably familiar with OUP's very short introductions, lovely little books that give you introductions to almost every field of human intellectual activity. OUP asked me if I would write a very short introduction to the whole of English literature. Since the series has a format of about 140 pages, this seemed a ludicrously impossible proposition, so of course I accepted it. I persuaded them to give me 180 pages, and off I went, surveying the entire 2,000-year history of English literature. Of course the approach is selective, but I hope that I've managed to convey a, a sense of the extraordinary richness and variety of our literary heritage. In writing the book, I especially enjoyed working on those areas that I knew very little about, such as the early medieval, the pre-Norman conquest period. The some of the chapters are devoted to the main genres of literature, novels, poems, plays, others to the history of what we mean by literature, and indeed the history of how the canon, or what I prefer to think of as the repertoire of English literature, came into being. All the famous authors, the big ones, are there. We have Chaucer and Shakespeare, Dunn and Milton, Wordsworth. But I've also gone into some of the, the less well-known highways and byways of English literature. And I hope that even people who think they, they know the subject well will find some surprises here. For example, do you know who was the first English poet ever to have their works collected in the form of a collected poems? It was a woman called Elizabeth Jane Weston, as early as 1612. Why does nobody know that story? You'll have to buy the book to find out. And in the final chapter, I range widely and reveal something of the extraordinary ethnic diversity of English literature. We might think of that as a new thing, the way that immigrant writers have repositioned our sense of what English literature means in the last 50 years. But what I actually discovered is that if you go right back through history, the influences of immigrants, of people from minority communities, has always been there. And in some ways I've tried to, uh, to recover the reputation of some of the figures who have been rather tarred by modern political correctness. Rudyard Kipling, for instance, plays a major part in the book. It was an enormous pleasure to write, and I hope you'll find it a pleasure to read.